Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Reeby, Principal of Vanderveer Elementary School. And I'm Dr. Tian, Superintendent of Schools. We are so excited to welcome everyone to our Vanderveer Evening Learning Academy. You are all in for weeks and weeks of enjoyment. You will be learning alongside your very own Vanderveer teachers. Also, we have teachers and administrators from across the district that will be bringing you fun learning experiences. You will become scientists, engineers, mathematicians, writers, world explorers, and learn to communicate in different languages as you explore concepts in math, reading, writing, science, social studies, world language, and so many more. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and we encourage you to visit often and view other lessons in our learning library as we add to the videos each week. Enjoy! Enjoy. Boys and girls, for those of who don't know me, my name is Mrs. Helwig and I am the music teacher at Vanderbeer School. Today I'm here to share some music with you. We're going to talk about instruments that we can find in the home. I was thinking about what my favorite instruments are and I love the violin. I like the guitar, I like the piano, and you know I love to sing. And when I sing, I like to have sometimes an instrument to accompany me, but I don't always have the instrument that I need. Maybe that happens to you too. <clears throat> Do you have a favorite instrument? What is yours? Oh, I hear piano. I hear electric guitar. You like the violin too? Oh, that's wonderful. Well, today we're going to take a look at what we have in our home. Since we don't have those instruments, what can we use instead to make music? So we're gonna to travel to the kitchen. Let's think about what we can find in the kitchen. I'll meet you there. Hi, welcome to my kitchen. What did you find in yours? I found a lot of items and maybe they're the same. Let's find out. So the first one that I found was a pot. So let me get it. So here is a pot and the pot makes a great instrument like a drum. I can use the bottom. I can use the sides. I can use the rim. I can create an ostinato using the top, the rim, the sides, and the bottom. A pot makes a great percussion instrument. Let's find out what else I found. So, and looking around in my cabinet, I found that I had this can of, or container of oats, and it had a plastic top, almost like a bongo. Makes a great instrument. And then I searched a little bit more, and I found this really big sauce uh, can, and I ripped the label off, and on underneath was a lot of ridges. So on the ridges, I can scrape, I can use my pencil. It makes a different sound than my fingers. I also have the bottom, the rim, the sides. Another great instrument. Did you find a can? Rip the label off after it's all done before recycle goes out to the recycling and you have another percussion instrument. So I looked around and I said, there's gotta be something besides pots and, and cans. And I found a cutting board. My cutting board also can be a hitting surface, percussion instrument. I tried scraping it, makes a different sound than the ridges. So a cutting board makes a great instrument as well. Now, I found one that you're going to love. I couldn't believe it. I tried it, and it sounded like a cymbal. 
I'm getting a whole drum set here. A baking sheet. When I struck it with my hand, it made this pitch. Like a gong or a cymbal. And then I tried using my pencil. And it made a brighter sound. So we have a great drum set going on. We have the pan. We have the pot. We have the cans. We're missing one more instrument. I want an instrument that sort of reminds me of like a maraca or an egg shaker that we use in class. So I came across these spoons. Every house has spoons and watch what happens when I put them together. I can make a clicking sound, a tapping sound, a bouncing sound. I love it. Let's learn how to play the spoons. Before we get started making music with our own spoons, let's meet a musician who plays the spoons. His name is Lucius Spoonman Tally. He comes to us from Nashville, Tennessee and compliments of our Quaver music program. Let's watch. My name is Lucius Talley, and I've been playing music ever since I was seven, eight years, some kind of form of music from hands and from beating on my grandmother's pots and pans and clarinet, saxophone, piano, drums. Well, I like all type of music because I come along when I was in elementary school, junior high, my grandmother See, it wasn't no television, see? So we had to listen to all our music on the radio, and I could hear all types of music, and just music, it just would become a part of my life. It just did something to me on the inside. This friend named Bobby Hill put a combo together, and we was entertaining down in Prince Alley. He would, uh, he would run off the stage and jump on the bar and tap dance all the way down the bar and come back playing spoons. He would always tell, oh, I started when I was four or five years old and, and I've been playing spoons and I, I never could get it down. And as I worked with him over the years, I finally got them spoons down. In fact, I auditioned for a talent show on this cruise ship for the guests and they had uh, the ship band, and I picked the song, Let's Groove Tonight by Earth, Wind, and Fire. And on that ship, the crowd went wow. And for seven day cruise, everywhere I went on the ship, they was calling me Spoon Man Tally. Everyone seemed to like it. Music is a great thing, it, it is a beautiful thing. When you're doing music, it's no wrong way. You do it your way. Practice every day. Don't be afraid. Just go out there and just live life to the fullest. I love to see people happy, and it makes me happy. And spoon playing is about the easiest instrument to learn and the cheapest instrument. <laughs> I have a variety to show you that you can do it, and if you want to play and have fun, Take something for nothing. Take two spoons. Every household got them. And if you hit them, all that sounds do like. Are you ready to play the spoons? First, we need to find two identical or very close to identical spoons. I found two spoons, they have different bottoms, but the bottoms are flat, so that's important. And they're, they're approximately the same size. So that's what I need. I need two suit spoons that are the same size with flat bottoms. Now, it's easier to hold a flat bottom, so we want flat bottoms, same size. And they don't have to be metal. If you found some 
plastic spoons, they work as well. So these are plastic. They make a great sound. And then we have our metal. Now, if you have wooden spoons, you probably have large wooden, wooden spoons. And let's not use those right away because they're harder to handle. Right now, I want two, you to go find two spoons that you're comfortable in holding. And like I said, I'll give you a second. Go get them. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, spoons. Here we go. So I have two spoons. Now, how do I hold the spoons? First, I need the backs to be touching. So that's the part that's going to click. So I need the backs to be touching, and I want them to be even. Now I would going to put one finger in the middle. So I'm going to use my pointer finger, and I'm going to put one finger in between. I'm going to put my thumb on top, and my rest of my fingers are going to grip it. So I have one finger in the middle. Let me hold the top here one finger in the middle, my thumb, and then my rest of my fingers. And I'm going to make sure that they're approximately or very close to being even with each other. And my finger creates a space. So when I hold the finger down at the bottom, um, there's a space in between. And that space is good because that space is what's gonna click when I hit. Right now, if I close them, squeeze really tight, they're not touching, but if I just relax a little bit, I want to grip down here so that I don't lose the spoon. So that's the hardest part is not letting the spoon slip. So let's see if I can move it up just a little bit in my hand. So you try putting it in your hand. So take your two spoons and we'll do this once again. Put the backs together and then put your finger inside. So now your thumb is going to be on one side and your other fingers, and you now have a space. Great. Okay. Do you have it? All right. So now we're ready to make a sound. We're ready to begin to learn how to play the spoons. Now that you have your two spoons and you know how to hold them, now we're going to see how do they make a sound. So I'm going to use my plastic spoons for this activity. Um, to show you the difference in the sound from my metal spoons. And so once again, I need to turn them back to back and put my finger inside in the middle, thumb and gripping fingers on the other side, thumb on one side, fingers on the other, one finger, my index finger, my pointer finger in the middle, which created that space. So I am ready to play my spoons. Are you? Here we go. Using my hand, I am going to hit the spoon against the palm of my hand. Now I'm using the palm of my hand. Spoons can hurt and we don't want to get hurt playing, making music. So we're going to use the toughest part of our skin to play the spoons. The inside of our hand, the palm of our hand, not the outside where all our veins are. We're going to use the inside. So once again, I'm going to tap it against my hand. When I tap it, this spoon is touching, pushing it to the out of the spoon that where my thumb is. Now, do you have it in the hand that you write with? That's important. Put it in the hand that you're writing with. Your other hand is going to be your hitting surface. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Did you do that along with me? Let's try. We're going to keep in groups of four, meter of four, and that means four beats for every section called a measure. Here we go. Try it with me. Do it along. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Great. Was it hard holding them steady? Yeah, that happens. Um, you want to grip it so that it's, it stays together, but you don't want it so hard that it doesn't move. But if your finger is in there, you're creating a space for it to bounce off of the other spoon. So you should get it. Just hold it tight enough so that you don't lose your spoons. Now, 
Your hand is a great place. I could go all day making different patterns with my ta's and tt's and quarter notes and double eighth notes. But I want to try other parts of my body. Your body is a great instrument. There are so many spots that will make different sounds. Let's try our arm. Once again, we want to use the tougher skin, so the outside, not the inside where my veins are, the outside. So I'm gonna hit the outside of my hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Do it along with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I changed it up a little bit. Another place is your leg. Now I gotta fix my camera for a minute so you can see my leg. I wanna use my legs, not my knees. Knees, these are plastic spoons, but if they were metal and I started hitting my knees, I would get bruises I didn't know I could get. So I don't wanna hurt myself. I'm gonna use my thigh and I'm going to hit, 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 hit. One, two, three, four, change, two, three, four. Do it along with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now another technique with my leg is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. All right, I'm doing it kind of fast, so I'll show you slowly. So I'm going to go down, then I'm going to come up on my hand. So down, up, down, up, The looser I make it, there's a little double bounce. Did you hear it? Much. I'm trying to, uh, let, let's see if we could try that. I'm gonna loosen up my hand a little bit and try it. Down, up. Don't wanna lose my grip though. So here we try it again. Oh, I lost it, here we go. You know, if you lose it like I just did, it's quite all right. It happens. So we're going to try to do a pattern together and a pattern using all the parts of the body that we, we played our spoons on. And I am going to create a pattern using hand. My spoon slipped. Hands, arm, leg, leg. Hand, arm, leg, leg. Nice and slow. Hands. Arms. One more time. Now let's see if we can throw that little in there. So that's going to be a TT. So we have leg, hand, arm, TT. Hand, arm. Create a nice pattern. Let's do it really slow. Leg, hand, arm. You got it. Great. Takes a lot of practice. Let's use quaver to explore spoons around the world. Playing percussion instruments was one of humankind's earliest ways to make music. Spoons are in the family of musical instruments called clappers. Throughout the world, different cultures use metal, wood, stones, and even tree nuts to create handheld idiophones. Let's explore the world map. In North America, where we are, the First Nations people and Native Americans played percussion instruments like drums, rattles and clappers to accompany songs and dances. We travel to Cuba. When enslaved Africans were taken to the Americas, instruments like the Aja from the Ivory Coast in Nigeria became the clave in Cuba. We have this instrument in our music classroom, the claves. Let's go to Egypt. 
These coppers are at least 3,500 years old. Look at the artwork. They, they're made to look like hands. That's cool. In Turkey, called the kesik, these wooden spoons accompany traditional dancing. They look just like our spoons, don't they, boys and girls? All the way across the world in China, the piban is made of hard wood, ivory, or bamboo, and is held together with string. It's played by holding two or more pieces in each hand and striking them together. That's beautiful. Our rhythm sticks don't have artwork like that. Maybe we need to copy the beautiful artwork. What do you think? In Russia, the Russian musicians adopted the kasik from their Turkish neighbors and used both wooden spoons and a related metal percussion instrument called the lashki. In Senegal, some clappers are made of wood and played by striking both pieces together. And in Spain, oops, there we go. Flamenco is a style of music that takes influences from African, Arabic, Andalusian, and Roman, Romani sources. It includes wood clappers called castanets, and we've seen castanets. We call them finger symbols in our classroom. So around the world, we have seen that spoons in different forms have influenced our spoons today. It's so much fun learning about how to play the spoons. Let's recap what we've learned today. We've learned that Spoons are from the clapper family. They are a percussion instrument and they are found all around the world in various different shapes, materials, sizes, and countries. They can be metal or plastic. We hold them with the hand that we write with. We put backs together, our finger inside, thumb on top, other fingers hold it steady, and then we hit it against parts of our body, our hands, our arms, our legs. We can do a combo, leg hand, leg hand. We learned so much today. Let's end our class today with one of Mr. Tally's favorites, this little light of mine. And let's play along doing different patterns to the music, shall we? Let's go. Ready? Count off for four. One, two, ready, go. if you keep on practicing. So get out those spoons, keep them nearby, and practice, practice, practice. Until next time, bye!